Hi everyone, today I just wanted to pop in and do a little video around fear and how to, even though you're feeling fear, to still move forward and be able to take action and to still function properly, even though you've got that. Now fear, when you feel fear, there's nothing bad with it. It's a normal thing, it's a human trait, and we all have it at certain times. But it causes a number of physiological changes. Our heart rate starts to increase. We dump a whole lot of adrenaline and cortisol into our blood that gets us ready for the fight or flight. Um, and this comes from uh, the old days in our, you know, way back in our ancestry when we might have been chased by a lion or some crazy creature or another tribe and we had to run for our lives or fight. The thing is, in our modern day world, we still have those same reactions and yet we're not getting, most of the time, it's not actually a physical threat. Now, obviously, if a man's coming at you with a knife or a gun, it's the same thing. But for most of us, fears pop up in situations, for example, like doing a public speaking event or something. You know, most people say they'd rather poke their eyes out than, than do a speech in, in front of a whole lot of people. Now, that is not a physical threat to you. It's not an endangerment of your health or your life but you have the very same physical reactions to that. And your heart rate will up, go up, your stress hormones will come out, your vision will start to close in, you won't be able to make good decisions. So how can you take control of this situation? Now, first thing is to understand that it's not actually a physical threat. You know, speaking on a phone call, getting up in front of people, you're not really going to get killed, okay? There's nothing bad going to happen to you. So reprogram that in your mind is that it's actually no physical threat and I'm in safety. Tell yourself that you're in safety. It's okay. There's nothing. What's the worst that can happen there? That you get up on stage and you freeze and you embarrass yourself. Well, you're not going to get killed, okay? It's not that bad. Um, and the next thing is to reframe this opportunity that's coming at you rather than seeing it as a threat, but seeing it rather as an opportunity and a challenge. Now, this changes your whole physiology. Now, when you see something as a threat, immediately those, those adrenaline that comes in, your heart rate, all of that goes up. When you reframe that and look at it as an opportunity, like you might be able to get up on stage and talk in front of your colleagues and how great is that going to be because you're going to be able to impart your knowledge, you're going to be able to impact lives, it's going to be fantastic, they're all going to be enthralled, they're going to love your stories, they're going to laugh at your jokes. If you reframe that in your mind as being an opportunity instead of being a threat, then that can really, really help you in calming your body down. The next thing that you can do is some deep breathing exercises. And you've heard me talk about this probably a few times if you follow anything that I do on social media. I'm a huge believer and I use this every single day, at least 10 times a day. Whenever I'm feeling stressed, whenever I've got to make a big decision, whether it, whenever I have to change my focus, I do just 90 seconds of deep breathing. So in through the nose, you can do a box breathing. So four counts in, hold for four, out for four, hold for four. When you get better, you might do it in a different um, seven or eight even. It doesn't really matter. What it is doing is that deep diaphragmatic breathing is telling your body that it's safe. It's stimulating the parasympathetic nervous system and it's calming your body down, stopping those those stress hormones from getting a control of you. So whenever you feel triggered from something, whenever you feel stressed, whenever you get road rage, whenever you get anything triggering you emotionally and you wanna take a little bit more control back, is to slow down, take a few deep breaths, make sure you're really breathing out in them and pushing the air out and then you'll, you'll actually start to feel your body instantly relax. It really, really works. This is also a great trick, by the way, before you go to bed to help your body calm down and get ready for sleep. But back to the fear. So another thing that you can do is exposure therapy. When you're scared of something, then the more you expose yourself to it, the less of a problem it's going to be. So they use this a lot with special forces. Now, special forces guys um, obviously have to go into combat situations, and so they train this over and over and over again, these horrible scenarios, these difficult situations, and they go into them again and again and again in their training until they're completely in control of their physiology and that no longer causes a fear response because they already know. And when that 
becomes reality so that they're they are able to control their physiology then of course when they're really in battle and there are bullets flying around their heads they don't lose the plot like most of us would i mean i'm in awe of what those guys do i mean i would probably lose the plot because i probably can't keep it together that much but these guys are trained over and over and over again and that's called exposure therapy and that can be a real you know like you might be just really scared to get on phone calls with people or do sales calls or whatever it is in your work that you find terrifying if you just get on the phone and do it again and again take a deep breath before you get on do it and do that exposure therapy then it will get a whole lot easier okay so that's deep breathing controlling your physiology another thing you can do to do that is also visualization visualization you would have heard me talk about before it's seeing yourself successfully completing that task and in this scenario you can be superman you can be wonder woman you can be whoever you want to be and you can see in this visualization and your brain does not differentiate between reality what's actually happening and what is just imaginary and therefore when you over and over and over practice this again and again and you can watch top athletes do this you see them at the olympics you know like the pole vaulters or the long jumpers and they're they're doing all this they're visualizing in their head before they go and what happens when they visualize like that is that they're actually having seeing them do it successfully and then they go and a brain has already done it successfully and it helps them to actually get in the right mind to actually overcome it another thing you can do of course is to get support and get some mentors around you people that will help you deal with the fear and move forward anyway when you have fear you have a limited decision making capability you have a limited world view and you're emotionally out of balance and you really need to bring yourself you see this pendulum of being too excited or really scared you actually want to be in the middle if you want to make really really good decisions so bringing your emotions under your control again is really really important this is also a great thing if you get angry easily and I know in the past I've had anger issues and problems with that where my amygdala you sort of your reptilian brain gets triggered by something maybe it's road rage or something and you just flip the switch and you fire and that reptilian brain, that limbic brain, if you like, is faster in its response time and it pours out the, the chemicals into your body that make you angry and make you like want to fight very, very quickly, faster than your logical brain can actually take account. So if you can turn your, when that happens to you and you're full of emotion and you're angry at someone, someone's yelled at you, something's happened at work, whatever it is, take some deep breaths before you respond and turn on this frontal uh, cortex up here this uh, the, the uh, near cortex which will help you if you give it a logical problem to solve it'll turn off that that lower sort of level amygdala that's going to cause that fight or flight response so if you i like to do things like count backwards from 100 in lots of seven so 193 and so on and that really makes me think very very carefully about um, a logical problem and that turns off the emotion and after a little while you've got yourself back under control and then you can make decisions whether you still want to follow it up whether you want to have a conversation with someone but you're not doing it in a completely triggered state it's never a good idea to do that so i hope these little tips have helped you today understand that fear is normal it's not bad it's not good it's nothing it's a physiological response we can control that response to some degree and the more you practice it the better you'll get at it and don't let fear rule your life you have to make decisions to move forward you have to take risks you have to weigh up the things and then move forward and go for it all right guys thanks for listening today